This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome, welcome, this welcome to Chicago. Oh my the God, the loop is Chicago. on again. Technical difficulties. The Wi Fi went out earlier, so it uh, reset all my settings. So, welcome to Chicago. This is the TCSF podcast with Big Z in the house. We got JC, Dynasty Fantasy Football, and the uh, two Northeastern bros are going to handle it tonight. No Surge, no Stevie B. So episode 198 is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Grit Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago. Use our promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off your entire order. That is TRUEFAN15. Get your official shirts now. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or the X, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that favorite button, uh, give us five stars. Make sure you leave some kind comments in there. Uh, it'll shoot us up on the uh, on the, on the uh, charts in there and uh, we'll be a little bit more successful. So remember to support your local podcaster. You can also support us by going and getting a monthly subscription at anchor.fm backslash true Chicago sports fans. Go over there and click on the support button and subscribe for as little nine little as 99 cents a month <clears throat> little rest of it smash thanks on uh, this live episode we'll be talking about the cubs and the white Sox and the what it's going to be a long summer for both franchises it, it's 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 going to be a long one so uh you know cubs split against the reds and you know we will talk about what jen needs to do with the cubs the white Sox break the streaks they're no longer streaking and what trades are coming in take out the white Sox? we'll yes. talk about all that we'll talk all of that oh, all we're right. gonna talk about it oh yeah <laughs> jc how was your week bro oh man let me tell you i am on vacation starting as of today this morning nice. um did you freeze there yep you definitely froze there Sounds like you had a really good, you so did your laptop, a good long weekend since it, it froze. It must have had a bunch of those margaritas to leave around there. And that, uh, there he is. He's back. Looks like your laptop oh, was drinking did margaritas. Here, did you lose me? Uh, I don't know what happened. Froze. <clears throat> yeah. So um, my week, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. You know, I'm on vacation uh, starting as of today. I have to go to back to work on Sunday for Father's Day. You know, some other guys asked uh, off for Father's Day. So, you know, me not being a father, you know, I, I guess I don't count. I don't, you know, I don't get to have Father's Day off when I request no. it. So um, that being said, you know, good good for my coworkers who are fathers. They get to spend some time with their families, I guess. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to some rest, relaxation, let my body heal up a little bit, uh, you know. The job I do, my body takes a little bit of a beating. So sometimes it's nice for my feet and my knees to, you know, not not uh, have issues for a week. Yeah. Uh, how about you do a little bit of a cold plunge, man? That'll relieve a lot of that uh, inflammation on the uh, joints, man. You know what? I've looked, you know, the, the one thing I want to do is I want to get a sauna. Like, Bro, I, I mean, want, do yeah. both. I mean, the, do the cold plunge to wake up and do it for like 10 or 15 minutes if you can or as long as you can. And, yeah, I've been looking at uh, they got they got some of those like uh, it's almost like a zip up tent kind of thing yeah. um, with like some infrared red light, you know, sauna type stuff with steam and everything. So I, I kind of looked at that a little bit and I was like, hey, I don't know. But yeah, the, the, the cold tub stuff uh, does kind of intrigue me a little bit. I just don't know if I want to have to buy bags of ice every time I want to use it, you know. Uh, um, yeah, facts. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I got to look into it a little more. If, if there's one where like, cause I, I know they make, you know, cold tubs where it's got like a whole motor in it and everything and they're super expensive. But if I can find one that's halfway reasonable that I don't have to go buy bags of ice, I might do it. Yeah. Just go to get old refrigerator and uh, retrofit it to your needs, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have seen that where they've done that too. Um, but then most of the time, like, if you're not using it frequently enough, like it'll actually ice up completely. 
Yeah. And then yeah, like you, know. you gotta sit there and chip it and yeah, it's a headache. So but I love how's your, I mean, how's your week going? Oh man, dude, it's uh finals week you're, for you're free, right? I'm sorry. You're free, right? All from the kids? No, not, not yet. I mean, uh, it's, I mean, Wednesday's the last day for finals yeah. for the underclassmen. Last week it was the upperclassmen. Uh, but I signed up for summer school. I haven't done summer school in a long time. And it was uh, too good of a deal to pass up. It's three weeks, Monday through Thursday, eight to one. A uh, nice little chunk of change. I don't have to do anything. I just got to be the adult in the room and make sure, you know, that they don't set the building on fire. Other than that, they're on their laptops, you know, clicking away on whatever class they uh, they failed. So it's really going to be easy money, and I can work on pod stuff while they're doing that stuff. So it's it's a win 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 win. Yeah, definitely. yeah, that kind of sounds like uh, how I was, you know, teaching my college classes. You know, when I when I was teaching those, you know, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and like nine a.m. to noon. Yeah, and I got a nice chunk of change. It was, it was sweet. Yeah, I love that gig. Yeah, yeah like those college gigs are very sweet. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, let's see. I've been catching up on some TV. I've uh, been watching the NBA Finals. Uh, let's see what else. I, I have not watched a single game of the NBA Finals. You're not missing much. You're not missing anything. I do want to watch tonight's game for the uh, NHL playoffs, the uh, NHL Finals, uh, the Edmonton and uh, Florida Panthers. So mm-hmm. that should be pretty good. Uh, but other than that, um, I have not actually watched no Sky games, which I, sh- I sh- missed one, I missed the last one. So, but yeah, I've been trying to keep up with the Sky a lot more now that yeah. you know, Angel and all this stuff going on. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we want to talk about women's basketball. Let's talk about it right now. We talk about the uh, Caitlin Clark. Uh, everybody's up in 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 arms about this issue that she was not selected for the uh, dream team that's going over to. Uh, to France, to Paris, and you know what? I, I'm fine with it. She doesn't need to be on the team. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's year one. You know, would it? You know, her being the face of quote unquote quote the WNBA right now. Yeah, I can I can understand why some people are upset. However, has she earned it? Has she deserved it? No, no. Based upon her actual play, I don't know. Um, I know there's some vets. You know, I was Facebook, uh, you know, surfing earlier and, you know, they were posting like Caitlin Clark's numbers versus this veteran's numbers. And Caitlin did have better numbers. But again, it's, you know, when you're going up against countries and different stuff, it's not bad to have the veteran leadership, you know, for the team. So, you know, like I said, it, It's year one. It's, you know, season one. Like, will she have like half a season under her belt so far? Not even. Right. So, like I said, I I can understand why, you know, she wasn't selected, you know, but, you know, like I said, she's going to be selected the next time around. That's going to be for sure. She's going to be on that team for the foreseeable future. So, the thing is, when I looked at, what the USA team looks like. You had Ariel Atkins, you've got uh Chelsea Gray, you've got uh Ryan Howard, you've got uh Joel Lloyd, you got Sabrina, I can't say her last name, is it Ion School? Uh you know, you got Kelsey Plum, you have um let's see who else, uh Deanna Tarasi. You've really got and uh Jackie Young, you've really got a bunch of veterans or or yeah. Ladies who have been playing for a long time who've actually produced numbers that are better than Kate and Clark, except for one. <laughs> Excuse me. I think that's for Tarasi. But you know what? Tarasi's won like five championships, five, eight championships, ten championships. Who knows? A lot. A yeah, lot I, I think she might have been the one they used like number wise. Right, because she's like 40. Yeah. yeah. Because like Kate the Caitlin did have better numbers than her in like everything except for I think it was Three point percentage um, shooting. She's forty two. Yeah, Deanna Taurasi's forty two with like a whole shitload little uh, championships. I will take Deanna Taurasi any day right yeah. now. Uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's that veteran leadership. I I agree with you. I'd much rather have that on the team than Caitlin, who you know, for for all things that we've seen, you know, she is turning the ball over a little bit. You know, making yeah. poor choices on the passing side. You know. Like I say, you know, it's something that 
she's got a little more growing to do in my opinion before she deserves it. And like I said, yes, she's the face of the WNBA right now, but that doesn't mean she needs to be on team USA or anything like that yet. No. And also the selection starts way before, you know, she even got drafted into the WNBA. So, you know, they've got to practice together. They've got to know the playbook. Uh, you know, it's a different coach. This is still, this is all going out while she's still playing at Iowa. So, yeah, you're not going to get that opportunity. The timing just doesn't line up. Also, you've been playing nonstop. I don't think she's going to have enough in, at the end of the, you know, at the end of the season or towards the end of the season when they play in Paris, enough in a tank to to carry a team. And I mean, if you think you're getting hit hard now, wait till you go to the international game. Yeah, and that's a whole other thing. Like you got to look at it from the standpoint of, I mean, she's used to playing in college where. You know, again, I don't know what women's college, you know, how many games they play, but I mean, they had a very short off season from, you know, the final four to the draft to Mm -hmm. the WNBA games. I mean, yeah, it's a lot. And like you said, I mean, that's a lot on the body, which I mean, granted, you know, 21, 22 year olds, I mean, (laughs) they shouldn't be as, you know, athletically out of shape as a 40 year old. You know, by the end of the season, I would hope. But, you know, if as a person coming out of college who's never played, you know, 90 games in a very short season, you know, because again, you figure they just wrapped up Final Four. She might have had like, what was it, a month, month and a half until the draft. And then boom, WNBA started up pretty quickly right thereafter. So, I mean, she's putting a lot of mileage on her body and, like I said, again, you want that veteran leadership that knows how to take care of themselves, that knows how to deal with injuries, that need, knows how to deal with international travel and time change and all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, she'll have her time and, you know, we'll see what happens. Yes. Yeah, uh, we'll stick with uh, with more basketball news before we head into our baseball stuff. Dan Hurley rejects the Lakers offer, stays at UConn. Uh, the Lakers offered him, I believe, $70 million on a six-year deal. Um, he said he was humbled for, you know, for the entire experience and the offer, and this, this and that. But he, at the end of the day, was, you know, wanted to stay with his championship team at UConn. Um, I mean, I don't... I don't, I, I don't I, blame I, him. I would want to go to the Lakers. I have to send you a hilarious. It's, it's uh, I don't know who the guy is, but he like always pops up on my, my Facebook or he does a lot, a lot of stuff on the NFL where it's like jokes and you know the quarterback room, and then like he pretends to be all the different quarterbacks okay. and like is talking smack to each other. Um, but he did one for Dan Hurley today, and it was basically like him being interviewed by the Lakers. And they were telling him, like, yeah, well, you know, first off, you got to get used to the broom closet because LeBron has your office. Um, and then you will also have to get used to giving LeBron, Bronny 20 minutes a game because we will have to nep- Nepo baby him. And, like, it was this whole, like, thing. Oh, and man. at the end, like, him being Dan Hurley, he was like, yeah, I'm going to pass. And they go, Okay, JJ Reddick. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like they just pivot to like, and, and, and they're like, yeah, it, it, I'll, I'll have to send it to you. It, it's pretty Definitely. funny. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you look at that situation, and like I said, if they really are going to draft Bronny and Nepo baby him, like this is the Lakers will be an absolute disaster, um, in my opinion. Um, I to go from UConn having like one of the best teams and that was another thing in the dan hurley video he's like he's like Bronny wouldn't have broken my like like he wouldn't even ever come off my bench in he UConn. Been a water boy. and and i gotta give him 20 minutes a game no 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 not at so, all yeah he's gone 16 and 11 over the last two title winning seasons i mean why would you want to leave that I mean, yeah, it's more money. Um, you know, he had signed a six-year, $32 million deal with UConn after the 22-23 season. Yeah, it's a lot more money. 
But in with the Lakers, you're scrutinized about everything. And like you said, if he's not giving LeBron or LeBron his minutes and, you know, not bowing down to uh, LeBron, he's going to get fired right away. If the Lakers go on a five or 10 game losing streak, he'll be fired right away. Like it's not worth the headache if you're, you know, you already know to build a championship culture and and a winning winning culture. I would not want to go to the Lakers. No. And that's the thing is like, you know, he's going to go there for two years and when it doesn't work out, they'll let him go. And basically it's because nobody listened to him. Yep. They only listen to LeBron and what LeBron wants to do and what players LeBron wants to bring in to play with LeBron. Mm-hmm. And you, you've seen it. Like yeah. they brought in Russell uh, Westbrook. What happened? Like he was gone. Yeah, you know I mean, like LeBron thinks, you know, the the players he wants to play with were great when this was like 2010, 2012. Like <laughs> a lot of these guys now, like it, they're not the same player anymore. No, you know, no. Russell Westbrook is not the guy he used to be. So, and no offense, like the younger guys that want to go play with, you know. Uh, who, who, uh, Anthony, uh, oh, Anthony, uh, yeah. Edwards, yeah, Edwards, like they want to go play with him, they don't want to go play with a washed up LeBron, you yeah. know. What I mean, like the game is changing now, like people want to go play with Giannis, they don't want to play with LeBron, they want to play with Anthony Edwards, they don't want to play with LeBron, like, like it's, they, it's, they look at LeBron and they realize he is not who he once used to be. He's still good. He's still a great player. Yeah. But he's not that guy anymore. No, he's not that guy anymore. Like I said, you know, the the dynamic of the league is changing. Like, you know, you you look at the guys like KD and you look at guys like LeBron and, I mean, even Steph Curry and Clay and Draymond. I mean, none of these guys are who they used to be anymore. Nope. Father Time is undefeated and uh, he's kicking everybody's ass over there. Yeah. Um, so- Wanted to transition to your favorite sport, football, and it's actually Chicago, Chicago related here. Mercedes Lewis will continue for his 19th season after he signed a one year deal with the Chicago Bears today. He spent that man defeats time every season. That guy's we, going we after talk about time. Father Time is not defeated. Mercedes <laughs> Lewis, you are doing it, sir. He's going um, for it. He's the, uh, he's, he's the oldest tight end uh, to play. He turned 40 in May. Yeah, he's he's, he's 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 a great depth piece for the Bears. He is a great blocking tight end um, behind Everett and behind Komet. He'll have a role, but you know it's he might get six, seven plays a game where you know he's blocking for a running play or something like that. But you know he he's got a very specific role, and like I said, he'll he'll be on a team making. You know, a million dollars, two million. I, I don't know what he signed for yet. I don't no. know that that information has been released, but no. you know what? Props to him. I mean, you know, ho- hopefully he's got it in his contract where he doesn't have to show up for OTAs and all that stuff. You know, just show up when the season starts because, man, at 40 years old, like y- you always hear about these older veterans that are just like, you know, when they get up there in age, they're just like, I can't go through training camp. No, I like, can't. If you I could just, just show up for the season and play, or like if I could show up for the last six or eight games, you know, the season and like play in the playoffs, like I would do it. But my body cannot go through, you know, 23 no. weeks, you know, or 27 no. weeks. I can't do it. I can, you know, when I teach, it's like I play, I'll pick a period. I'm like, I'm paying, I'm playing one period. I cannot play all five or six periods. I will, I will die. There's no way my body can handle that. Um, you know, even if I do work out two or three periods, I, I feel it for two or three days. I'm like, I'm sore, this, this, and that, which is great. You know, I get to move around, but as a 40 plus year old, no, no, I just want to show up for the game. I'll do the stretching. I'll do the treatments. You know, I'll get the massage. I'll, I'll be at the facility, but yeah. I'm only, I'm practicing, you know, for uh, Thursday to play on Sunday. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, when I was student teaching, like it, it really, like, First off, I always loved playing with like the first graders and the kindergartners because like we would all like uh, I think it was like Fridays we did. uh, It was like a Pac-Man game where like you could only walk on the lines 
of the court and you know like it's the tag game so like, yep. I, I always love playing that with them and then it was a, like a tag game so like you know i would be like the uh you know defender of pac-man or whatever and i'd be tagging all these little kids um and then it was the eighth graders man because you know they they try to talk smack and mr howard you can't do it. like oh really okay <laughs> spike in your face during volleyball what <laughs> <laughs> that's different yeah when it comes to team sports yeah you, you, you get that or, uh, it, was, it was floor hockey floor hockey was the other one oh. that i would just i would go out there and dominate because like you know, they all crowd to the puck and I'd be like on the other side waiting for like some like one of these little kids to like, hey, pass it over here. And I'd be like, slap shot in your face. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That, that face -off, -off. Like, oh my God, I would I would destroy these kids in the face offs. Yeah. Last year I played one on seven and beat them 14 to two. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that just shows you that, you know, the old man can still do a little bit. But uh um, let's take a quick break before we could dive into what is the Cubs. Uh, demise I, at this point. I don't know what's going on. I want to call it the demise because they're not moving anywhere. So we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. 15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to No War on the Weekend, new episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots, so let's kick it back over to Big Z. No War on the Weekend. Thanks, Sean. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z in the house. We got JC, Dynasty Fantasy Football, and it is time to talk about our baseball teams, and we're going to start off with the Cubbies. Oh, we don't want to hear this song. No, I, I love this song. I got to turn it off because, you know, YouTube will shut yeah, us we'll down. Get hit. Yeah. yeah, we'll get hit for that <laughs> one. Uh, it is a popular song. Uh, so uh, go Cubs, go the Chicago Cubs split against the Cincinnati Reds. Um, you know, they did I was there one I was there on Tuesday when we were up uh oh, five zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh I, I wasn't gloating too much. Uh I was cheering for my team. I wasn't gloating. Uh, but I knew the wheels would fall off as soon as the starting pitcher was taken out after the rain delay. I knew that was going to happen. I, I even told all the cup fans next to me, especially Ivan. Thanks, Ivan, for the ticks. Uh, we had a great time. Um, and then the next day when Steven went, it was exactly the same script. Uh, Sox jump up to an early lead, five to one. And then when the starting pitcher exits the game, boom, boom, boom. And they walk it off and win the game. So congratulations. You beat a high school baseball team. Well, but see, like, I feel like what you just described is the Cubs right now against every other MLB team mm -hmm. that are not named the White Sox. As soon as our starting pitchers are pulled out of the game, it's like, you know, it's over. Like we're getting shellacked, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're now dropped to, I believe it's fourth in the division. Yeah. You guys are all tied. You're a half a game out of last place. Um, <laughs> you're 10 and two with, when Shota pitches and not a good record when he doesn't pitch. Uh, but you're looking at like a lot of issues with uh, your offense. That's just on and off. You're 32 and 34. Uh, the Cardinals, Reds, and yourself are all tied for second place behind the Brewers, who are 38 and 27 with their new manager. Yep. Well, you know, we were we were promised a uh, better 
product on the field and you know but he didn't do anything to to to, to give you that he said that and then he, i mean well, they, they brought brought in Shota, which has been a great improvement yes. Yeah, so um, has been a great you know bringing belly back and bringing some of the like it's the the one thing I do have to say is at least they didn't sign belly for big money. Yeah. So, you know, that's the plus is that they didn't give up on their on their stance and they got belly for, you know, decent price. But uh yeah, really no improvement. And and I mean, you know, how do how do you outbid the Dodgers on, you know, when yeah. they just make up new rules and you know <laughs> people for whatever the hell they want for yes. and we'll pay you 30 years down the road you know but yeah i mean like i said we're we're in we're in it right now and it's not even the dog days of summer yet and we are struggling right now and you know i don't know how we get out of it you know the the reds i mean they took it to us you know they Three two three, you know whatever. I, I you know I barely kept up with the score, but you know De La Cruz. I mean that guy is looking like a star, uh, stud. You know, stud. you know stealing bases and you know just doing everything. You know, like I said, I mean he's looking like the Javier Baez, and Javier Baez is looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we can talk about that a little bit later about the fallen stars of Chicago. But uh, you got Cubs and Reds first game, four to eight Reds, three to two Reds, four to three Reds, and then the Cubs win the last game to avoid the sweep, four to two. The Cubs are playing uh, tomorrow. They're playing a three game series in Tampa before they come home to play the Cardinals for another three game series. The Tampa Bay Rays at the moment are. I think they're like in third place. Um, sorry, actually they're in last place. They're thirty-one and thirty-four, but that is probably the toughest division in baseball with the Yankees, Orioles, uh, the Red Sox are at five hundred. The Blue Jays are one game under five hundred. I can't believe the Blue Jays have fallen so far from grace. And speaking of the Blue Jays, so there's talk that Vladimir Guerrero is on the trading block, and that the Cubs have been talking. Uh, internally about maybe making a splash for, uh, you know, a first baseman in Vladimir Guerrero. And, you know, I looked up, you know, what would what would be a good trade package? And you would have to give up a lot because he's under control for a couple of years, I believe, two years, this year, next year, I believe. Um, you would probably have to give up Christopher Morel, which I don't think that's a big give up. Uh, Michael Arias, which is a right-handed pitcher. Uh, outfielder Brendan Davis and Yonic, Yondrick Pinago. So, Two prospects, Arias, who's been up and down, and Morel, who has not lived up to what he could do. He's just, I think Morel's a utility player that can play everywhere. I don't really think he's a third baseman. Yeah, sorry, I'm looking up Vlad Guerrero right now. Uh, 25 years he's, old, so yep. Um, how, how long is he under contract for? I think this year and next year. Well, I mean, also like if, if you get a chance at negotiating with him first, um, yeah. I would do it. Why not? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you I mean, about to, like, yeah. like you said, you know what? Prospects are Suspects. you don't know. Yep. So I, I'm down for it. You know what? First base. You know, I know Tochman had uh, you know, the hit that, you know, saved us, you know, I think versus the White Sox or, you know, yep. Whatever team it was recently, um, but you know, to to me, first base can be improved on. That's for sure. Um, like you said, third base is definitely suspect for us right now. Um, when you go down the line of you know where can the Cubs improve, it's definitely third base. It's definitely first base. I think our outfield is pretty okay. It's decent. Right now. Yeah, it's decent. You you brought up Pete Crow Armstrong. He's he's playing left field. Hap is really good defensively in center. And then like, uh, you, Suzuki is. Yeah, you got Suzuki. You can play both. Yeah. Right, and then you have Cody. So you can you can swap those guys out to give them some rest. You know, put them at the H and so forth. Um, so I really think the outfield is pretty much set if they do complete this trade. Um, then you actually have a first baseman because you've been putting um anybody and everybody at first base. Um, and that's not the answer. 
Um, but you also have, you know, Hap has been up and down. Wisdom is really not the answer at third base or on on the MLB lineup. Horner's falling off a little bit. Um, Morel's hit or miss right now. Right, David Bodie got called back up. He was in the minors most of the year. Like you know, I, I like Bodie. What was it like five or six years ago, or right. was it like when when he was like um, it might have been 2016, 2017, no. or it, it but like it, I think it was like after Bryant left. Like I did, right. it was like I liked Bodie. Like he was doing okay, and then like he kind of just fell off. You know, it's. <sighs> You know, they figure yeah, you yeah. out. They figure you out. It's as simple yeah. as that. I mean, I'm looking at the lineup for the Cubs. Morel batting 203, Ballinger 260, Michael Bush 242, Suzuki 272, Hap 222, Swanson 226, Hawkman 261, Wisdom 200, Michael Amaya with his hot garbage at, at catching. He can't block balls. He can't call a game. He can't hit him and Jan Gomes, like 198, 155. I think Chicago has the worst catchers. And we got Maldonado, who's batting like 069 or something. We have the worst catchers in a city. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but, I mean, Con- Contreras was good offensively, but, I mean, he couldn't call a game or frame a pitch either. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I mean this has been an ongoing issue for the Cubs for a while. Um, you know, the at least Contreras did give you a little bit of offense, you know, with his bat. But like I said, I mean, yeah, you know, calling a game and you know, framing a pitch, you know, making it look, you know, a ball look like a strike, you know, they have not been very good at that. Um, no, you know. and uh, it came out today, and this was uh, a courtesy of david kaplan on espn 1000 he told the story that you know he had multiple uh incidents where he would have a bad game or he'd be pissed about something or you know getting into it with another uh teammate and he would literally break ipads like slam and throw ipads and break them in half and not once not twice but multiple times and that was one of the reasons the cubs were like we can't deal with your anger management uh you're gonna have to go so it looks like oh, yeah, him being a high head was his exit ticket out of here. Yeah, I mean I can see that, but I mean the the one thing I give him, I mean, he had such an arm. Him and Javi was amazing to watch for that period of time, you know, just basically nabbing everybody out a second, you know, for that period of time. But yeah, I mean it, it was fun to watch those two, but like I said, yeah, if, when it came to calling games, I mean you know, you, you watch a lot of the veteran pitchers with the Cubs, and they were like, yeah, no, we don't want him catching for us. You know? Yeah. So. Um, another trade possibility would be to tap into the Rockies and try to steal their catcher, uh, Elias Diaz. He is a, a veteran. He's 33. Um, he is battering at the moment 305. Uh, he's got 13 walks, 28 ribbies, not a lot of home runs, but he is making contact and getting on base. So, He's good. He's a decent catcher behind the plate. He can call the game, and he's actually hitting. And uh, I, I think this would be a really good addition. Uh, you get a veteran that can hit, and um, you know he, you get him off a crappy team that really isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Again, I would want to look at his contract. I mean, just like with Vlad, you know, is it a one-year rental? Is it you know multiple years? Um, so in 2021, and, he signed a three-year deal. So this is he's literally his contract expiring this year. Um, so it was a three-year, fourteen point five. So you're looking at about four million per year. But at the point you trade him, it's going to be a lot less. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on what we would have to give up to get him. You know, batting three. What was a three hundred five? I mean, yeah, that's a decent bat. So, like I said, I mean, depending on what you got to give up to get him for a rental. You know, is it worth it to us in the long run to give up prospects for a guy that's a one-year rental when we're now fourth in the division? <sighs> you're not going to give a highly touted prospect for a rental. You're, you'll be giving up a double A guy or, or two do- single A guys, you know, or even no, probably I, I even cash, even cash. So, um, you know, you can do that. So, I mean, at this point, the catcher 
position needs to be addressed. The yes. bullpen needs to be addressed. First base needs to be addressed. You need you need a big bat in that lineup because Swansby has never been that guy. Uh, Bellinger goes in streaks where he gets hot and doesn't. Suzuki, I think he's easing his way back since the injury. Um, Hap hasn't been consistent. You have a lot of inconsistencies uh, both on both sides of the baseball. So it like yeah. it's really hurting the Cubs right, right now because you had such a hot start and now you've just faded into the background. Yeah, and you know, like I said, it, something something I I should probably take a little more time and look into is you know how these guys are taking their at bats. You know, is it like Morell swinging for the fence or like you know, like I said, back in the day, you could watch Chris Bryant and Javier Baez. You know, they just want to swing for the fence. They don't. Yeah, they're not swinging to get on base. They're you know they're trying to go for the glory. So. You know, it, are we having an issue where these hitters are doing the same thing, or you know, have these pitchers just finally caught up to us where they know hey, they can't hit low and away? They love chasing a slider in the dirt. You know, like I said, it, th- this is something that needs to be looked at. And the Cubs, you know, do we not have a stats team that is also looking at all this and telling the players like? Hey, you need to lay off this stuff. They're killing you, you know, yeah. or this is a real issue, you know, for, for your at bats, you know? And, and again, I would assume we have to have a, st- a statistics team, you, you know, for this team, but yeah, they, they get their like little say, iPads. With, with all the and all that. And yep. So like I said, it, something's got to give, we, we definitely need to start playing better. Um, Cause like I said, to be, you know, we, we were expected to be way better than we are this year and to be fourth in the division. It's like I said, Ed, and like right now, like there's no like, hey, we're playing pretty well. We're fighting and we're just losing by, you know, one a game or whatever. Like, no, we're we're getting rocked eight to four and like we're not looking like there's any offense to, you know, be spoken about at all. So. Yeah, and, and also you're looking at this is year four of, of of the Jet administration, so it's like it's time to put up or shut up. I mean, it's time to put the cards down on the table and ante up. I really think that you know you can everybody can tell about who has the best farm system. The top two, top top three guys will either come up or you use them as trade chip to to push you over the edge. The Cubs are not there; they're not in that winning. We're gonna win this year. Right, you you've got the Orioles, you've got the Dodgers, you got the Padres, uh, you know the Texas, uh, the Yankees who are have been killing everybody. You've got those upper echelon teams who are ready to win right now, and those are the, the teams that will you know they will have prospects that are expendable, and they'll move forward. Like we don't care, we're, we're trying to win the championship. The Cubs, not so much. I think they're meddling. Whether you know, are we middle of the road or can we compete? He said that they're going to compete. Okay, if you're going to compete, then you got to sign players. You got to trade for players that are impact players, and those two players would make an impact. They would they would give you a shot in the arm. You need that. You also need another starting pitcher. We've talked about this multiple times on this podcast. They need another starting pitcher. Again, you're going to have to give up to get, and that's the problem. Is especially in Chicago, we are very attached to our prospects. So I don't know what Jed is going to do in the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's to me, the only prospect is this pitcher that uh, is a Horner. The, the one that uh, just had the, I think it was a lat issue. I think it was like two weeks ago. Um, and he got pulled, but I mean, he's the only guy that I can think of that is the only one close enough to coming up to me. No other guy is off limits. Um, you know, in making a deal, in my opinion, um, like I said, for the Vlad deal, if, if he's controlled for one more year, I'd be all for it. You know, the, the catcher, that's a rental. If we can get him for some lower prospects, like you said, like some double a guys or whatever, I'd be all right with that. But to, to me, it's just, you know, at 34 and 31, it's like, like, what are we looking at? We're fourth in the division. How far out are we from Milwaukee? You know, can we get back in this? You know, because they, they got to go on some winning streaks to get back in this, you know? Yeah, they do. 
They got to they got to win series, and that that's the biggest thing is win series. You're talking about Kate Horn, yeah, he's he's ex- expected to be with the club this year, later on this year. You also have you know yeah. Owen Casey in the outfield, but you have a log jam in the outfield. Uh, you yeah. have Matt Shaw at third base, but he's not expected to be up here till next year. Kevin Alcantara has had a cup of coffee back and forth. Uh, J- uh, James uh, Triantros, another one for 2025. You have a lot of guys that are coming up in 2025, and I talked about Michael Arias being the trade chip. Another right-handed pitcher that's a bullpen arm for 2025. Guys that are not fully developed yet, not ready for the show. Those yeah. are the guys that you might have to use to trade. Like I said, the, the bullpen issue is, I mean, that's a whole other thing. You know, like I said, we definitely need to fix the bullpen. I mean, e- even during the World Series, our bullpen was an issue until we traded for Chapman. Um, and then uh, the year after Chapman... Uh, I forget the gentleman's name. It was K something. Um, um, oh, I know what you're talking about because he was on the White Sox. Is when the next we traded for. Yeah, him. I, I can't think of the name, but you know he was yeah. another supposed you know name yeah, that was, was you know yeah 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 the yeah. Um, but like I said, you know we have never really had like a top five, top 10 closer ever. No, and you, you, know? you could have gotten uh, uh, damn, I did, uh, Hater, Josh Hater. You could have gotten Josh Hater. He was a little pricey. He was still a free agent for a long time. You could have got him. You didn't, and now you're paying the price because you don't have a clear-cut closer. And if you're going to be a contender, you need someone to slam the door in yeah. your opposition's face and close it and just, you know, you need a guy that's, has got the balls to do that and they don't have that well not even that i mean like now with the way baseball is with your starting pitchers only going five six five innings, innings i mean yeah. you you got to have those middle middle relief, relief guys, guys, long relief yeah that you know can come in and also slam the door in their face so you know uh, unfortunately the game has changed where you know these pitchers aren't going seven eight innings anymore and then you bring in a guy for one series you know the Cubs will catch fires. Israel, I really hope so, man, because, you know, yeah, it's right. it's dire on the south side, so I need something to be exciting over the summer because I was waiting for baseball season forever. After the Bears, you know, had their lackluster year, I was excited for baseball. I'm always excited for baseball. And the fact that our team, my team, really, really sucks, I wanted to see at least the Cubs do something to be exciting. And they've literally pissed on their leg the last month and a half. I don't know what's going on with the Cubs. I don't. I don't know what the thing is to fix it. They're not wasting too much energy. I, they're. This is in boxing. This is in boxing, <laughs> where you can take a round off. Listen, it's, it's NL Central. Okay, you, it's you can take one game off in the series, but you still need to win the series. You still need to win the series, right? Yeah, usually you know, teams like if you're winning the series, you give up the last game because it's a travel day. You're like, ah, whatever. That happens a lot. But right, right now, it, you know, it's it, it's time to put your, you know, the 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 foot on the gas and start, you know, pulling away because the trade deadline is going to change a lot of these teams and these teams that were not as competitive a month ago are now competitive. The Pirates are right there with you. The Cardinals are right there with you. Cincinnati just beat you and they're ahead of you in the standings. If they catch fire, which I think they're, I think they've won eight straight or something like that. They had they had won eight straight or something. You know that that's those are the streaks that will launch you ahead of all, all the other teams. And if you're not going on those streaks and you're not winning series, you're going to be left behind. All right, what what well, is like, it? Like we were talking about you know with, with Vlad Junior and all this stuff. You know, basically, like you said, hey Jed, this is your time. You said we were competing. Are we competing? Or was that a lie? You know, because like Belly's got out outed outs on his contract, you yeah. know, all this stuff, you know, it so it then becomes you know, it's, we're we're a middle of the road team. And yeah. unfortunately, middle of the road teams, you don't get to draft very good prospects. You know, you're not getting that top guy in, in the class. You're you know, like I said, when when the Cubs won the World Series, we had a lot of very young talent on low payroll, which allowed us to go get a lot of starting pitchers, right. allowed us to spend money elsewhere, which, you know, unfortunately, Hayward was, you know, he is what he was. You know, it, it was a mistake. It was a bad signing. 
you know, defensively he was good, but his bat was, you know, very lacking. Yeah. Lackluster. But, you know, like I said, you, you had Contreras, you had Javi, you had Chris Bryant, you had Rizzo, you had, you know, Hayward. all these younger players that were on low, low contracts. Yeah. And it, it allowed us to really spend on those starting pitchers. And yeah. that helped us win. And, you know, I, I wish we could be more of a dynasty than one championship in you know, a hundred years, but you know, it's hard unless you're the Yankees or the Dodgers who, like we said, just maybe 10, 15 minutes ago where, you know, you get to spend whatever you want and you don't care. Yeah. You know, and they they can do that. You know, I know the Cubs had a lot of financial issues during the pandemic where, you know, they had committed money to, Real you estate. know, revitalizing Wrigleyville and real estate, and you know they couldn't make their money back on concessions and you know everything else. So, like I said, I mean, you know, the Marquee Network. I don't know if the Marquee Network is going to work out. No, no. You know, I I think there's a lot of fans that you know we're getting to a point where people are tired of the taxes. You know, and by taxes I mean. I got to pay for Netflix. I got to pay for Amazon. I got to pay for Peacock. I got to pay for Marquee. I got to pay for to watch whatever sport I want to watch. I have to have nine subscriptions. And and to me, like it's getting to the point where, you know, people are getting to where like, I can't afford to have, you know, all this, all these bills, you know? So no, completely agree with you. It might be cheaper just to go to the bar to watch your team. Eh, Depends on I much mean, you drink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. That, that was my one. I'm like, I'm like, if I go yeah, to the bar, yeah. let's see, I'm probably gonna have four beers or at least like how many rum and cokes. And then you're, by the time I do the math on that, and then by the time I tip, and then afterwards I'm gonna be hungry. So then I'm gonna have to. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at about seventy dollars for one night. So it's like I might as well pay for the the year subscription to Amazon. <laughs> uh, yeah, people are criticizing Council or Ross. I really don't think Ross was good with the bullpen. Um, you know, Council really doesn't have the talent that he had in Milwaukee, and that's the biggest difference. Milwaukee has a great pitching staff up and down. They have really good hitters um, that are, have been proven, and it's 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 going to take some time. I I would not have I mean, a hot dog. Even Madden had issues with the bullpen, um, Dusty Baker, you know, killed our pitchers. Yeah. I mean, you wow. look at guys like Wood and Pryor and, Ma- yeah. you know. Blew them out. I mean, Blew their arms out, yeah. 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 So we're we're used to managers not being able to, uh, you know, take care of a bullpen and do what's right by them. So yeah. have a hot dog. Yeah. With ketchup? No ketchup. No oh, come on. <laughs> no ketchup. All right, let's take a quick for, for break. For those of you that don't know, um, oh. I went to Portillo's not too long ago and made sure to <laughs> send <laughs> these guys in a group chat a photo of me dipping my hot dog in ketchup. So, sacrilegious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, what, what does Israel have to say? Our bullpen is fine. They'll get it fine tuned. I mean, I hope so. I mean, there's talent on there. But I just don't see anybody that can close the door in the middle relief. Or he said, absolutely not. <laughs> that makes me sick. All right, Israel, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. 
What up? It's Martin Moreno, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. Thanks, Martin. Welcome back to, uh, <laughs> to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast. I am Big Z, and I'm here with JC Dynasty Fantasy Football, and Israel's been chiming in the entire time. Thanks, Israel, for staying on and uh, ch- checking out the show and uh, chiming in. He says, I don't. I'm about to puke thinking about ketchup. <laughs> uh, you know what? Stay tuned for because I do have a, uh, <laughs> a stirring a pot that includes ketchup. So uh, you, I don't know if Actually, you're going to be sick. I have a stirring a pot as well that I need to. Beautiful. I we have two of them. Like three weeks. So, yeah. Beautiful. Let's talk some Chicago White Sox baseball. Uh, I guess I can play the sounder for a little bit. I mean, come on. Why not? Why not? Right? Do I, have I got one win. win. Play it. <laughs> they got one win. I think there we go. I was that 13, 13 losing streak? 14. I don't want to get clips. Uh <laughs> the White Sox. Oh, White Sox. Oh, oh, Israel's he's hot and ready to chime in. The White Sox after having a 14 game losing streak. 14. Uh they actually got a win. They got a win, uh, and it came at the at the cost of the Carmines, the so- the Red Sox. Um, you know they should have won three out of four, but you know splitting a series after losing fourteen ain't so bad. And I'm really hoping that they can start playing five hundred ball the rest of the season, and I'll be happy with that. I do not want them to have the worst record because it makes no difference. Because I think they can no they can't pick any higher than tenth, um, which that's the new rule because if you're in the lottery the year prior you can only pick it so high the next year they're trying to quick the tanking uh which was you know pirates athletics all that stuff that continue to tank and, and then just sell off their players once they get good um so that's that uh the white Sox are also taking calls on Kopech, crochet fetty Robert Jr. Robert Jr. is only 26 signed through 2025 he has team options for 26 and 27. He's a five tool player, but the problem is he can't stay on the field. You you know, the Dodgers, Phillies, and Royals all need outfielders, and they will be making calls. And then you're looking at the Padres who need a pitcher, and they are willing to spend. So they're looking at trying to get crochet. Um, I really think I hope they don't trade crochet because I think he's he's a centerpiece that you can build around as far as your pitching staff. But they just lost Darvish and Musgrove. Um also, you got Fam who got into it with um, I can't one of the catchers might have been uh, from the Brewers, yeah, uh, Contreras, the, the younger brother Contreras. He got into it uh, with uh, Tommy Fam. Currently on a magical IL. I don't know. He says his leg is hurt or whatever his ankle. Mm, suspect. Um, and then you also have Dijon, who's been pretty, you know, pretty good. Fam and Dijon have been veterans that have been actually actually shown up to the ballpark, been professional, done their job. And, uh, you know, they've been doing it. Let's see what, what Israel has to say here. Uh, Israel says, I was actually impressed with the Sox. Did it get the Red Sox? Yeah, they actually played like an actual baseball team um, while the Red Sox uh, did not play as well. Uh, they could have won, the, swept them. Yeah, they could have. But, you know, it's the White Sox. Uh, let's, let's see. Tear it all apart. I mean, it, it, that's what they're doing. They are tearing it all apart. You will see most of these guys will be traded by the trade deadline. Someone's going to need a shortstop. Someone's going to need a, a second baseman. Someone's going to need an outfielder. If they trade Robert Jr., which I hope they don't, because I really think that if you keep those two young young bucks together, you'll be able to build and you'll be able to have them while everyone else is coming up and they'll be good. Again, they're on rookie, like they're on cheap contracts, very cheap contracts. So I think it's beneficial for the White Sox to keep them. If they trade from Chris Getz has already talked to multiple teams saying, this is exactly what I want for player A, player B, player C, player D. This is what I want. This is my price. Need it or kick rocks. That's how Chris Getz is actually functioning. I can respect that because he talks to all the, the whole league and say, this is the price. Either you're going to meet it or not. Either way, I got talent. We'll figure it out. But for, the, for those veterans, I think those guys will be gone uh, sooner than later. Well, I mean, hopefully for you, uh, that that is definitely the case. I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, it's 
nobody ever wants to see their team struggle like a season like this um you know and unfortunately like you said i mean you you got decent players that can't stay on the field you know you got a couple of good pieces that might be of value to other teams but right now you know the white Sox are playing for their pride more than anything you know yeah and like i said it, it's same thing with the cubs i mean you gotta you gotta look at yourself and you got to say, hey, you know what? We're tired of losing. We're we're playing for each other. You know, for forget the fans right now. Forget all the outside distractions. Forget everything. Like we got to get this right on the field. And you know, like I said, I mean, it, it's horrible that you know the White Sox are given what they were given. But I, I think the plan was to rebuild from the get go. So, like, we kind of understood, you know, like, you're going to have to suffer for a year, maybe two, um, and then hopefully we can put something together after that, you know, um, which, I mean, like like the Cubs. I mean, how many years, you know, we'd go get Nomar garcia Paro, we would go get Soriano, we would go get, and we would just be middle of the road. And sometimes yeah. being middle of the road is not solving the underlying issue um you know about getting better so you know hats off to the Sox. they they have a plan unfortunately it's a plan that you know fans are probably not going to like they're probably you know upset with it you know want to see a better product on the field yeah we don't like it because we just went through a rebuild and we were supposed to be you know the, the queen of the ball we were supposed to be in the playoffs year after year with all this talent that finally came up and then you sign these, you know, th- these veterans, just like the Cubs did. They followed that same blueprint, and it just blew up in their face. And yeah. I think, you know, a lot of it had to do with Jerry Reinsdorf cutting the legs out of Rick Hahn and saying, nope, you can't get this good manager, A.J. Hinge, who ended up going to Detroit. I'm going to put in my guy. Yeah, did they win? Yeah. I mean, I think he was literally asleep at the wheel, and they won 93 games. And then the year after that, when he managed, what happened? They didn't win that. They didn't go to the playoffs. That's exactly what it is, you know. And then you had you know, cancers in a in a clubhouse that were fighting with each other. Tim Anderson, you know, getting knocked out. That was literally the last straw for the White Sox. That was it. Once he got knocked out, the whole team was knocked out because that clubhouse was toxic. Everyone hated each other. No one was no one was doing what they're supposed to be doing. No one respected anybody. There was no leadership on there, and right now there is still no leadership with Pedro Grafal. Like, literally, like the last game, we had bases loaded, and he had Maldonado hit. Two outs, bases loaded, and he let Maldonado hit. Like, it's the sixth inning. You have a good catcher. You have, you can put anybody on the bench that hits a lot better than him, try to score some runs. But he didn't do that. Like, I don't understand how we continue to hire managers that have no experience being a manager, do not have a proven track record. You could have got Bruce Bochy, you know, you could have got one of the best managers. What did he do? He won a championship with Texas. That's what he did. Because all he does is win. He won two championships in San Francisco. He's a winning manager. Puts the culture in. He's the leader. The buck stops with him. That's what you need. And people are crying for, oh, sell the team, sell the team. Yeah, they can sell the team. You still got to be able to have an ownership and a group that's going to put a winning product on the field. And they don't do that because they get so much money from people going to the, you know, to the games, the stands, the shared revenue. And guys, Jerry Reinsler owns 20% of the team. There's still 80% of the team that we have no idea who owns the team. All right. It's as simple as that. So when you say just Jerry Reinsler, you, you don't know what you're talking about. There's more to that. So, yeah, I, I think another another issue is, you know, like Chicago is a big city, but you also have to figure, I mean, we're supporting the Cubs and the White Sox, you know, and yeah, I know like, okay, L.A. is supporting the Angels and the Dodgers, but let's be honest, they're supporting the Dodgers. And then you sit there and look at, okay, New York has the Mets and the Yankees. Yeah. Let's be honest, they're supporting the Yankees. Yes. Okay. So, you know, when you look at Chicago, like even though there's two teams and even though I'm a Cubs fan and I think most 
people support the Cubs. Mm-hmm. I, I would say it's probably like a 54 46 split where, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's a pretty even split between the Cubs and Sox in the way of fandom. Um, so, you know, when you sit there and look at the revenue of one city going to one team, you know, it's that spending money, you know, like I said, it, it's not as much as, you know, when it's an 80 to 20 angels versus Dodgers, you know, money wise split, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard because there is a huge passionate contingent of Sox fans. They just do not go to the games because there's not a winning product. They're not going to put money in Jerry Reinsdorf's pockets because there's not a winning product. And again, the Cubs, whether they're winning or losing, they have the full ball ballpark. And that's great. It is a touristy thing to do. Yeah. It really is. Um, you know, people come, they, oh, there's, they visit there's Chicago. And Wrigley, you know, being, oh, there is. Yes, it, there's it, nothing it, wrong with that. I'm in Fenway. You right. Know. And then you have the bar district right there. So there's stuff to do for, you know, if you're 21 and up and you, you want to go party, you can do that all night over there. You can go to a Cubs mm-hmm. game, enjoy your time. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. They built that culture and that's perfectly fine. That's why it's fun to go over there. As opposed for the White Sox, it's different. It's more a little bit more family oriented where, you know, everyone goes there, they tailgate for a couple of hours, then they go inside. You know, and then if you want to bring your family, it's accessible for you to walk around with your family. They got stuff for the kids to do. Um, you can walk around the entire ballpark. You can do the, uh, you know, the the meal package where you can, you know, all you can eat, all you can drink before the game on the underneath the right right uh, right field bleachers. Um, yep. They do bar bar crawls. They do a bunch of cool stuff there. But it's just like we mentioned uh, multiple times on this show. It's a Reinsdorf thing. It's a Reinsdorf stamp on it where we're going to make the ballpark. We're going to make the stadium a lot fun, but the product may not be the best. Yeah. I mean, like, I also think it's partially the neighborhood, the fields in as well. Um, You know, like we, we were, as we discussed, you know, earlier in the season when Reinsdorf wanted to, you know, acquire the new property and potentially put up a new stadium and everything like that. You know, I, I think that could help as well. You know, again, with a little more safety and security in a different neighborhood, you know, but again, then you lose, you know, the, the parking lot and then you lose, you know, the tailgating aspect, you, you know, so it, it's kind of give or take, you know, right. But like I said, I mean, I, I've been to Sox games, you know, I have friends that are Sox fans and I've gone and done the, the all you can eat meal or whatever it is, like you were talking about below yeah. uh, right field and everything. And then we ended up sitting in the outfield, like right by the bullpens. Yep. And, you know, you talk smack to, you know, the players that are in the bullpen. Um, but like I said, you know, it to me, I just... When, it, when I have the choice of going to a Cubs game, which, again, I am a Cubs fan, or going to a Sox game that, you know, the tickets are $5 or $10, I would still go to a Cubs game just because of the neighborhood, you know, because of, you know, the other attractions around, like you said, where, hey, if the game's out, like, we could still go to a bar and, right. you know, and Walk have a good time right. or, you know, or there's plenty of restaurants. You can go to a restaurant and get a good meal after the game you know so again a little more infrastructure around white Sox field guaranteed rate field i think would help them a lot yeah i think that that would help um last note for the white Sox: they are calling up drew thorpe he is 23 he was in the dylan cease trade this past march he's ranked number 41 in baseball and 53 in the mlb pipeline he'll make a start tomorrow um, he was also part of the Juan Soto trade from the Yankees and, and the Padres, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, the, the kid's been traded a couple of times. Um, so you're looking at uh, a pretty good pitcher to call him up to see what he can do. We, you know, we have a lot of pitchers on the IL. Um, so, you know, I'm excited for this. I, that's one game I will watch, uh, for the White Sox to see how this kid does. So I'm really excited what is up in store for the White Sox, especially for the youth. Uh, let's see. Chicago has the best passion fans. Yes, they do. Yeah, 100%. Uh, 
And then what else do you say? Yeah, I mean, you yeah, if you if you look at sports fandom, in my opinion, the only other uh town, in my opinion, is Boston. Boston. Yep. Um, because I mean, like I said, you, you look around LA, there's so much to do in California and the weather's so nice, you know. Like yes, the Lakers are sold out every night, but other than the Lakers, I mean, you sit there and the Dodgers as well, but it, it's you know, oh, are, are we going to go to a Lakers game tonight, or are we going to go to the beach, or are we going to, you know, there, there's just other things where you look at Chicago, like, I mean, the games are almost sold out every night, right? You know, for the Black, whether it be the Blackhawks or whatever. I mean, Chicago just loves to support their teams. A hundred percent. All right, we'll take another small, quick break, one, and then we got one, one more point. Go for it. Yep. yep. Trevor Bauer, watch. Uh, oh, yeah, rumor of the Astros, um, because the Astros have been uh completely decimated. Uh, so there, there's a Trevor Bauer watch, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll let JC continue his uh Trevor, Trevor Bauer watch, which I actually really appreciate because I love watching his videos on Instagram. But uh, I, I just want to see, like, come on, somebody gives a man a chance. I mean, I, I know all the issues and everything, but give him a second I chance. Mean, Give yeah. him a second chance. Let him still, prove it. Still throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. Still, you know, doing his thing, you know. But like I said, you know, it, it'll be interesting. I mean, to to me, if, if if he could sue the MLB and prove like, hey, you guys are trying to keep me out of this, you know, just out of spite, you know, I don't know. Yeah, the Cubs could definitely use him. All right, let's take this quick break, and we'll come back with Stirring a Pot. Uh, so stay tuned, and don't go anywhere. Where's my thing? There we go. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Hey, this is Mikey O, and you're listening to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast. Don't forget to visit Mikey O at Mikey O Show or www.mikeyoshow.com. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z. We, today we got JC Dynasty Fantasy Football filling in with a lots of Cub stuff. It's usually not his wheelhouse, but he's handling his own today, baby. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, Israel's been chiming in all episode. Thank you, Israel, for being a supporter, for listening. We really appreciate you being part of the show. We love it. Come back every week. We can, we surely love talking sports with you. Uh, he wants to know if you can make him an Italian beef or a Chicago style hot dog. If, if I can make one, if you can yeah. make him one, <laughs> I mean, I, I cooked dinner tonight for my whole family. I mean, made a nice, uh, uh, gnocchi, um, uh, with a white creme sauce and steak and uh, portobello mushroom and uh, spinach. So, like I said, I, I got I got culinary skills that y'all don't know about. So, um, but the, the that's, 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 uh, yeah, I, I can put together a hot dog with <laughs> onion, mustard, uh, sports pepper, and a cucumber or pickle, if you will. That's some celery salt. Uh, he said he'll fly to Chicago for that hot dog. <laughs> Just buy you Portillo's. It's literally a block away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go with stirring the pot. You know, you know, that's what we do. We talk about food or uh, other things that, you know, might stir the pot. Uh, so let me, where's my, what's my boxing thing? I'm so like discombobulated today because I moved a bunch of stuff around. Um, so, you know, I have one, and I saw this, and it's a TikTok uh, thing that people came out with. I am not going to try it, but I do want to talk about it. So let's really get ready for stirring the pot. All right, this TikTok challenge or TikTok 
trend that's going on is including ketchup. It is grabbing a regular Kit Kat bar and dipping it in ketchup. I, I, I'm I not making this up. I love Kit Kat bars, but I am not dipping any one of my Kit Kat bars in ketchup. What about you? Because you're the ketchup man, JC. Would you try that? No. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, I, dip, I dip burgers in ketchup. Like, I dip french fries which french fries i actually so if you give me potato skins it's mm. ranch if mm. if it's a french fry that. it's either barbecue sauce or ketchup so I'm one of one of those guy. two um but like when i was a kid man i used to eat steak and i used to dip it in ketchup my dad was always a one sauce now salt and pepper only like yeah. butter that yeah. thing like, butter it up I, right Sear it, sear it. Now I do things properly, but like, like I said, when I was a kid, you know, well, we're you talking, were yeah, ten, that, that 10 makes 12, a lot of sense. you know, it, it was catch up, you know, like that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes but, a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, like burgers and hot dogs and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I use ketchup. Like, I, I still love a Chicago dog with, mm-hmm. like I said, all like everything on it. I do, I do pull the tomatoes off. Unfortunately, I just, I'm. I'm not a big tomato fan unless it's on a BLT. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, like I don't really care for a tomato. For whatever reason, on a BLT, I love tomatoes on a BLT. But otherwise, like in a salad and whatever, I don't really care for tomatoes. You know, in, in general, um, you is know, it a texture it's thing or is, is it texture or taste? I, I think it's a texture thing. I think it's like you know, you Bushy. bite into a tomato and it like gushes and yeah, not a not a fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, like like sliced tomatoes on a burger, fine. On a hot dog, I pull it off. I don't know why. I'm a strange person. <laughs> yeah, uh, it says tomatoes give you so much energy. I guess yeah, they do have potassium. So um, that's it. Uh, what is your stirring the pot? Okay, so my stirring the pot, I feel like will be way more controversial for you, sir. Um, so I have a coworker who is a huge Selena fan. Okay. I'm, I'm on so the my question is, and my stirring the pot topic is, do you think if Selena was still around, would she have broken more of the barriers of like the crossover Latina American, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. would she have had the staying power as a major artist? Because I mean, because like we, we know, because like I said, we, we know she has low power now, and that she still has a huge fandom. But like I said, like three albums down the road, four albums down the road, you know, do things start to taper off? Do, you know, does she start changing up her sound, and then some of the fans mm. lose interest? You know, I, I really don't think so. I think because she had just started crossing over with her English album, and she already had her Tex Mex um you know fan base her her that's her, literally her you know her cement fan base that no matter no matter what she did she was getting the support you know she was going to cross over so big before she passed away um you know her english album just went it went like triple platinum whatever when she passed away obviously that that kind of happens you know people just buy and listen but there would be no jlo and look where jlo is at with a lot less talent and yeah. so then there's a better looking woman in my opinion better looking woman um she's she spoke both languages perfectly fine um she was crossing over with a bunch of different artists um she would have been offered movies easily and i think she would have kept been been able to still have her english fan base and her tex mess tex mex fan base and would be still touring to this day i really believe that because she had so much time. and she started her own cloning line when she was like 16 or something like that. So she definitely was crossing a lot of different barriers at the same time. And then so many people came out of Selena. You have like uh, Los Dinos, which is her brand. You had the Cumbia Kings, which is her brother. And then you had uh, the kids that broke out of the Cumbia Kings. Like there was so much talent around her as well. Um, it's just, it's sad because that was such a, unfortunate way of losing one of the greats um we will never know you know yeah that, that's and, and like I said, you know you, 
my whole thing is because like you bring up you know some of these bands nowadays whether it be like reo speedwagon or journey or right you know they were so popular in the 70s um and everything you know I, i'm going to see billy joel next weekend yep. um so you know billy joel amazing artist has a huge fan base but it, it's one of those like i said after after the third or fourth or fifth album you know you start to see a little drop off in some of the you know album sales or you know whatever it may be you know the 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 songs are not the hits you know that they once used to be you know of of that i see what you're saying but if you look at the you know if you were to compare it to like taylor swift right she has her swifties no matter what crap she puts out there her Swifties are gonna buy it and they're gonna swear by it. You know, the, the Beyonce fans, same exact thing. They will follow her to the end of the road off the cliff. You you have that fan, she would have that fan base where they would literally protect everything that she did. And if you especially in this social media uh living lifestyle that we have now where everything is up to the minute, and you know, my opinion matters more than yours, she would literally have you know her own Swifties. And no one would be able to touch her. Yeah, but I, I guess what what I'm getting at is like, would she be like a Madonna now? Yeah, you know I mean, like where you know, which I, I mean, Madonna is still selling out concerts, still doing pretty well yeah. from so is Janet Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, a you lot know, of these but, older, but yeah. a little past their prime. You know, is the interest still there for it, being someone like you know? I think it's 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 different because she has such a, a that, was, huge... that was another person I was about to bring up was Richie Valens. Um yeah. you know, La Bamba. Same same thing, you know, where it's you know, would would I don't think Richie Valens would have had such a hot career. That that one I don't think because if you listen to the original music, that's not sung by Los Lobos, which is the album that people think that he sounds like. He doesn't sound like that. If you listen to the original album for Richie Valens, it doesn't sound that clean or that great. Also, he was 16, you know, 16, mm-hmm. 17 when he died. I don't think he would have had the longevity. But for Selena, I really think that because of her fan base, her Latin fan base, just like Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony hasn't put an album out in two, two, two three years. And then he puts an album out and it's like, eh, it's okay. He's got one good song on there, but he sings all the hits. Just like Billy Joel yeah. is going to sing all of his hits. And he'll like, hey, I got a new album out. I'm going to sing one or two songs. See, you know, probably the most popular songs according to their, you know, the research. That's what's going to happen. I think that would have been it. I mean, that's a great question. But I think that's exactly what would have happened because you have Mark Anthony that still is touring. You have Juan Gabriel. You have Vicente Fernandez, Alejandro. Fernandez. All these Spanish artists are still touring, um, you know, into their old age. Ramon Ayala is like 70 and he anywhere he goes, he sells out. You have a lot of this Spanish contingency that will follow you over and over, no matter what you do, and they'll see you two, three times of the year if you come. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I just I thought it was a great topic because, again, you know, I one of my coworkers is just every day I walk into work and she's sitting there with Selena playing, and, <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, man, just like thinking about it, it's like. She was the Shakira before Shakira. Yeah, she was the Jennifer Lopez before Jennifer Lopez. Yep. And and you just sit there and but at the same time, you look at like some of these older bands, like I said from the seventies, where like they have their hits, but like as time goes on, like their new stuff, nobody wants to hear the new stuff. Like they want to hear the hits, and it's yeah, like I mean, they, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I like, do see that. But you see, like, you do no, see nobody a lot wants of to hear the new Bon Jovi stuff. They want to hear the old Bon Jovi stuff. You know, it's it just is what it is. You know, yeah. So, I it's just, it's just I, I think it's it's I Andy, I know what you're saying because I, I can I can think of a couple of Latin artists. You're like, yeah, the old stuff is a lot better. The new stuff is not that great. But then there's other Latin artists who continue to make good music. Like Mark Anthony's a good prime example. He'll still make really good music. Is it? the type of music he was making 20 years ago? No. But he also started in doing freestyle in New York. He was a freestyle singer. Then switched over to salsa and then more like boleros and doing this and that. So he he evolved. And I think she would have evolved as well, you know, singing different things, collaborating with different people. 
and I think that she still would have been successful. Um, would she be like top of the charts, like you know, like like the uh, Taylor Swift every year? I don't think so. Yeah, Gran Combo is a good good example. You know, they they're all in their seventies and still touring all of Latin America. And when they come to, especially when they come to Chicago, they sell out. Are they selling out arenas? No, they're selling out the smaller theaters, like the Rosemont Theater. You know, whatever seats like five to seven thousand, whatever seats there. Or the you know, the uh, oh, all state Aragon ballroom constantly has you know oh yeah oh stuff yeah for the Hispanic stuff and yeah. I mean they're I mean they're sold out and like my my brother works you know a lot of the events for like the medical staff there yeah. and I mean he's always like oh man they show up in their cowboy boots they are they are decked out to the nines like oh dressed, yeah oh yeah it, it's an event and they know they're gonna be there all night and they're drinking all night having a great time and. The, it's literally jam packed where like the crowd is really dancing you you're not dancing the crowd is literally moving you around um and, and i've been to those in my younger days and they're great they're they're great yep. but it, it i really that was a great question jc i really do, do appreciate that one yeah i think we spent like 25 30 minutes just on that question <laughs> we spent <laughs> but, minutes on like, that I said, one, yeah. like i said because because again like to me it was a great story in the pot question because i was like man like do we think she would have longevity like you know would she have been like a madonna like you know if if everything had not happened the way it happened could she have broken could she have broken through and been as big as you know madonna or you know name another female artist you know uh i I don't want to say taylor swift because taylor and beyonce are kind of on that above a whole nother level um but like i said like you know potentially the madonna the shakira the you know that second tier where still selling out arenas united center and everything like that to me it's just i really definitely think that she can still would have been able to sell like the united center out because you know especially because she was so close to her brother who's you know part of her band definitely could have been like oh i'm bringing back my brother's band and they're going to be with me for this tour bam tickets are sold out three nights in a row israel thanks for coming on the show really appreciate you uh (laughs) yeah yeah israel thanks for uh chiming in um i think we should just wrap it up we're almost out of time we did really good time today man awesome yeah so yeah we did we did almost an hour 30 and we talked like no sports (laughs) yeah we talk we can talk Selena all day so everybody thanks for listening a big thank you to our sponsor 606 media true chicago sports fans and grit clothing company don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official podcast t-shirt uh search for keyword true chicago and use our promo code true fan 15 for a 15 percent off your entire order true fan 15 is your promo code go and get your shirts now um, I'm in the lab. I'm literally editing my, one of the episodes. I interviewed a comedian, a uh, very funny dude, and I got about three or more, three or four or more um, interviews lined up in the next couple of weeks. So June 1st, I mean, July 1st, look out for more episodes for uh, Impoxicated, um, really interview based, get to know people, uh, give people some some some, uh, some light to their career maybe you not may not know them or maybe you do know them uh so it's a really cool show i'm really uh having a lot of fun with it you can also check out uh steven and sean on no water in a weekend um uh, every monday night ish tuesday whenever they post I, I i don't know sometimes they're off um so that's a funny show especially when i'm on it uh, we need to get jc on that show but he usually works sunday i mean well you can do friday nights can't you uh for i get out of work like uh 10 45 so I mean, I could probably join in halfway through. Um, you know, I don't know when you guys start recording normally, but oh no, he starts recording about seven thirty. Yeah, but I mean, by ten thirty, we're we're uh, you know, hammered. It's post game. Well, yeah, that too. Post game. <laughs> 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, everybody, give us a follow. Give us five stars on your podcast app, on YouTube, on X, whatever it is. You can follow us at, uh, you can follow JC at JC Dynasty FF on all of his uh, socials. You can find me at Big Z underscore 606 media on all my socials. Give us a follow, share with your fellow uh, sports 
Uh, thank you, Israel, our, our your fellow sports enthusiast. And uh, tell them about the show. We love to have new fans. Come on, talk sports with us. Thanks, Israel, for chiming in today. And for JC, I am Big Z. We'll see you next time for episode 199. And until then, ooh, ooh, before we uh, before I sign off, I want to say rest in peace to uh, former Bull uh, <laughs> that he just passed away this week. Uh, I wanted to mention that. I totally forgot because I got so caught up in everything. Um, our former Bull. Jesus, I had to just had it up here. Why did I just lose my thought, my train of thought? Here you go. Um, Chet Walker. Uh, who passed away this past week. Um, so uh, condolences to his family. And he was also a really, really cool person and a great bull. Uh, so until then, um, be good to each other. For the love of sports. <laughs>